G'day everybody and welcome to Dog Shadow Gaming. As always, I'm Belth on the channel where we live to game and game to live. And today we're looking at our last episode in our Battlefleet Gothic Armada multiplayer faction um, overview or, or look at, uh, basically in-depth look at, at each one of the factions. We're doing them in, two, in lots of two. Um, so this will be the last one. I've done the others until um, we we'll probably look at launch period once we get right through beta. This is currently in beta, early beta. Um, so we're in December now of 2018. I was about to say 17. Um, game releases in January 2019. So they're probably susceptible to patching here. And you'll see that some of the things that I say, especially in this particular episode where we deal with the Elder primarily, um, there is some patching in it, I feel, for this particular um, uh, faction of these factions. So um, some of what I'm saying is probably going to be patched and we'll probably relook at that later on once the uh, um, patching and everything else happened in the next round of beta or in the launch. But as of right now, early beta, December 2018, I'm just giving you an overall feel of it. Um, I'm not going super imbalancing all the way. I'm more talking about the, the class itself, how they play, what they're sort of leaned towards, um, which I, I must say the developers have done a really, really good job of really bringing the flavor of the Warhammer universe and the individual races feeling and sort of focuses and ethos into the game that looks like no matter what the criticisms of balancing are they've done a really good job of making them feel like individual factions who play very differently which I think is the root key when you're playing these sort of games like um, Total uh, Warhammer Total War um, 2 is the same sort of thing. Each faction plays really, really differently and has a different feel and, and theme and ethos with it. So they've done that the same here in Battlefield Gothic and I think it's amazing. Anyway, enough babble for me. Let's get in and have a look at our last two factions in this series. So the last two factions are the Corsair and the Azrani. Now, um, I will do the Corsair first because I can't stand the Azrani. Personally, they're just not a big fan. Not of them as a faction or as a law, but just how they play in this game lights at me a little bit. I've used them maybe twice. Didn't like them, so I just haven't used them a lot. I have played just about everybody else um, at least 10, maybe 15 times. Um, out of the Aldar, when I do play them, I tend to play the Drukhar just because I think they look amazing. Um, but these guys just haven't had any luck with them. I really don't know how to play them specifically, but I'll go through it with you guys and we'll see what we can find, okay? So let's start off with the Corsairs and see what we've got here. So the Corsairs, wild-hearted Eldari Corsairs can be found wherever the galaxy offers adventure and experience to thrill their heightened senses. Reckless and mercurial, they own no loyalty save for that they choose to give. Only a fool would trust them without good cause. Eldari Corsairs fight from highly advanced spacecraft that are lighter and faster than comparable vessels, but are also much more delicate. As such, their vessels rely on extreme speed offered by their solar sails to avoid incoming fire rather than on the ability of armor to absorb it. So these guys heavily, all three of the Eldar factions are heavily micro. Because they're so delicate, You've really, really got... It's all about manoeuvring with these guys. Like, it's all about manoeuvring. Um, it's not like the orcs where you just roll in orc, orc, orcs, you know, orcs, 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 and just barrel through stuff, or the tyrannies are just getting close and start feeding, or the necrons where you just zap around the place. Um, these guys are all about staying out of firing arcs, staying behind your enemy as much as you can, which makes them extremely micro-intensive, which means if you've got a lot of ships, which at the moment the game does seem to reward you for having more ships rather than less, um, but that makes the micro even more intensive, especially with this particular faction. Uh, but it's much easier with these three guys to go heavier, bigger ships that are, so you've got less ships to micro. Um, that's generally the way most people play them at the moment because uh, little ones just get popped instantly and you can't like if you've got too many it's just too many to try and handle all at once uh, so most people who do play them and you don't see them played that often these guys you almost never see played these guys you see played a, a bit and these guys you see played a bit the corsairs and the drukhari the azrani very rarely i have not seen a lot of people use them um so anyway let's do the corsairs we'll go in here and we'll have a quick look at them We've got the Sky Raiders, the Eldritch Raiders, the Steel Eye Reavers, the Sunblitz, 
the Twilight Sword, the Void Dragon, the... Is that, I'm not sure if this is Inari or Nari, and the Y is silent. I'm not really sure which. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm liking the Void Dragons. You know, it's got dragon. Cool story, bro. Needs more dragons. So, we'll go with that. Hang on, let's... He doesn't have the best picture, though, does he? This guy looks pretty cool. And this guy looks pretty cool. Ah, uh, we'll stick with our Void Dragons. Okay, so as you can see, I've barely played them, so I've really not unlocked much here to help you guys. So I'm sorry if I can't explain this a little bit more. Um, but again, guys, if you do play these guys a lot and you know some good tactics and strategies, please put them down in the channel below and let me know and let everybody else know what you feel is good strategies to use with these guys. Now, um, let's talk about the Void Dragons. The Void Dragons are a large and bellicose Corsair fleet active in all corners of the galaxy. They are infamous for the fragmented and unpredictable nature of their attacks and show no reluctance to engage even substantially more numerous foes. Interesting. Um, it's all about it's all about moving around and, and not so much stealth, but like just getting around them. So we're going to do a stasis bomb here to slow people down. Uh, also, the effects ship detection range reduces to 25 seconds. Disruption bomb. Uh, I feel like we're going to do this action here so that we know where everything is. Uh, again, like uh, if you watched my last episode with the Drukari, we went for this and it was pointless because there was only um, one. There was only one asteroid field on the entire map, so again, totally useless as a skip. Um, not a lot of usability with it. Uh, I feel like why in runic targeting non node stance, the range of star cannons, glass cannons is increased by four thousand five. Applies to all fleet ships. That one is probably pretty useful. Accelerated batteries are plus to flagship, increases the range increased. Uh, fleet flying ships. Go with that one there for the flagship. It increases weapons range. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go with those two. So we're gonna go skirmish and we're gonna pop in here. Let's have a look at the fleet, see what we can get here. Okay, so the big one here, the Void Stalker. Uh, most people tend to run with this when I'm battling them in 1v1s. It, it is, for a big ship, it's very maneuverable. So let's have a look and see what it does well. Okay, so it's got heavy star cannon artillery. So this is front angle. So again, you've got to be facing them to do anything with it. Uh, at eight, at 4,005, so when you front notice with them, it's 85% accuracy. Remember, we did get for the flagship, this will be our flagship, by the way. Um, we did get extended range by four, so we can go to medium range of about 9,000. We could probably even sit out at sort of 13,000 and get pretty good damage, you know? Um, cool. Uh, angle of fire, weapon angle, side, front, doesn't exist. Front doesn't exist. Weapon angle, side, front doesn't exist. That's interesting. Hmm, heavy pulsar can beam. Okay. And then we've got some launch base. Okay, so that's our one guy. Let's have a look at his stats here. We've got quadruple solar sails. The propulsion of the ship is assisted by four solar sails. The destruction of each one reduces the ship's speed. So you really don't want to be taking damage because it starts slowing down the more damage you take. Plan strike. The ship has 20% chance to deal additional troop damage when, am when amount depends on its tonnage. Okay, cool. Titan get plus four. Poor troop efficiency, so you don't want to be getting straight. You didn't what you don't you don't want to be getting straight. Um, boarding acting troops, not great. And yeah. Voice immune to plasma storms and solar eruptions. Cool. Fragile. The probability of the ship will suffer critical effects is increased by a hundred percent. This thing is fragile as like literally a tin can. Hollow field replaces regular shield. The hollow field isn't affected by damage. The gauge fills up in the ship's speed. Is over 90 and loads at speed is under 50%. Depending on the gauge, filing, um, filling rate, Holdfield has a chance to absorb lances and shots. This is a shield, but it's only a shield while you're moving. <laughs> um, you know, as soon as you stop, you, you, so you gotta constantly keep moving because you can hard constantly keep. Again, most of the weapons are front mounted. So you gotta, you, you, you're nosing on them and then you gotta move and then you gotta turn and you gotta move and move and move and move. Um, not good. It's a lot of micro. Um, Eldari propulsion and discipline plus 25 to bravery. Cool. 
All right, so let's have a look here. What have we got? Uh, so front mounted. We've got torpedoes. Uh, we got launch bays and we've got star cannon artillery. So, okay, cool. Hollow field. So it's all the same. Nothing really changed to triple solar sails. Uh, pulsar cannon, star cannon artillery. Yep, launch bays. Pulsar cannon beam, star cannon. So I'm going to want, I feel like I want that. I'm just going to get two of those. We'll keep the fleet as small as I can, less a micro, and hopefully I can do it. Uh, no, we can't do him. Okay, that's our, what have we got left? Four points. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all we can do. All right. Um, uh, Die already is what we're going to call it. <laughs> um, all right, let's give it a go. Um, we've got um, a flagship has a range increased by 4,500, so that's cool. Um, runic targeting mode stance, the range of all star cannons, light cannons, and scythe missiles increased by 4,000. Oh, so ship. So um, runic targeting mode is the big one we're going to be wanting to use. We're going to go rando. Uh, we're going to go medium, I'm going to launch here. Alright. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this and see how we go. Um, we're going to stay together because I don't want to separate too much. Um, we're going to be wanting to move around the map as much as we can. We're going to hit here. We're going to go over here. We're going to stay together as much as humanly possible. We're going to put it here. Pick this up and move. Uh, we've got a bomber squadron here. We've got fighter squadrons here. We're going to go bomber squadron. He's already sent out some fire squadrons. So let's send out Dark some. Stars in flight. Beginning attack pattern. Oh, all right, so he has split his troops a little bit. Okay, we're fighting from the front. Uh, most of us need to be at around 6k. Because uh, that's where a lot of our... We're under 9, actually. We're under 9. Keep it at 9. Click on that. Uh, so auto-engage mode. Unless the ship receives another order, it will automatically target a stick against enemy. And then we got lock on here. Until the end. Actually, I do that. We serve. Okay, so we've engaged them with our fighters there. We got Necrons. A green light means Necrons. This is good, because what it means is Necrons are a bit like the Eldaras in they don't have a lot of ships. They do have a lot of maneuverability, but they're also a little bit weaker than us. He's got the big boy. All right, so he's the one we really want to be taking. Yes, commander. As quickly as we can. The enemy has seized a strategic area. We're gonna wanna shoot that. You and have hope. seized a strategic area. I think that's gonna miss. He doesn't have a jump, he can't do anything at this point. So, we've kind of got it up on him now. Marked. We're in targeting mode, yep. Don't be want to front on, because that's where the majority of our weapons come to bear. there for. Okay. Need to keep moving. Want 
stay behind this guy as much as we can. The enemy has seized a strategic area. Yeah, they, they seem very strong. <laughs> I know I'm making them look that way, uh, but I gotta tell you, it's not. <laughs> um, what's happening here is we're going up against the Necrons. We are able to. Um, they don't have shields, so we can we can do a lot of ra um. That's a cool feature of it. However, the enemy has seized a strategic area. Until the end. So I wonder where they are is the question. How many of them are left is the other question. Yes, Commander. I'm gonna leave this guy here. The void up, is yeah. I don't think there's been much left. We're going to. As the fates decree. Taking new position. Oh, here we go. This is not possible. Ride the solar winds until the end. Eagle bombers beginning attack. So that's it. So um, I didn't get to show a lot of um, their abilities there. They are fast and removable. You saw me use the, the turn thing where you can just turn the ship completely about and take off, um, which can be really useful. But again, it's heavily micro-y. Um, they have fairly decent firepower. However, if we're up against anything else, <laughs> the Necrons are pretty, I mean, they're like, these guys have the weakest probably armor. These guys would be the next weakest armor. If we had gone against like Tyranids or one of these other guys, it could have been a very, very different battle. Um, anyway, that's a bit of a look at the Corsairs. Um, it's a little bit of a look at them. Um, as I said, I haven't opened up everything. So um, if anybody else has got any um, bits and pieces they want to add to it, by all means, please do leave. Let's jump on now to the Azrani. 
Craftworks are cosmic lifeboats, the last remnant of a star-flung civilization, all but consumed by its own hubris, forever teetering on the brink of annihilation. The Azurani fight to defend their existence with ancient technology and the power of prophecy. Azurani fight from swift vessels that favor hit and run strategies over sustained engagement, often using the cover of gas fields to shield their approach. Though more heavily armored than the Aldari vessels, Azurani ships are fragile compared to those of other races and demand careful maneuvering to achieve victory. So apparently they're more heavily armored than these two, but we shall see. Um, okay, so you've got the Nari, uh, so very much like that other one, the other one's there, the Cortez, the Alatok, uh, Baltan, the Leiden, the Samahan, the Ulthwai, and the Ostara. Um, let's do Ostara. Um, Crawford Ostara is seeked in the worship of Niad, the god of the dead. It should be a little surprise, therefore, that there are strong ties between Ostara and Nara. And even with Yanara herself. Cool. Um, do, do, do. We'll use the stasis bomb that worked for us. We'll use the disruption bomb there. And you know what? We'll just go for the two we had here the targeting node and this one here. So let's hop into this way and see how it's different. So these guys, I don't know if you guys have ever, like, if anyone watching is, is like this, these guys very much remind me of. Um, if you've ever watched Deep Space Nine, there was an episode where um, a Cisco sort of built his own Bajoran ship, and the Bajoran ship had these sort of solar sails on it. And if you know the episode, if you're a Deep Space Nine fan or a Star Trek fan, then you'll know what I mean when you see these ships. They look just like Bajoran vessels. They are like spitting images. I don't know if, they, if, if they were designed originally with somebody who'd been watching Deep Space Nine when they, when they did it. It was, I think the game came out around when Deep Space Nine was out, but um, anyway, that's what they look like to me. I know Star Trek fan, we're talking about Warhammer. I know, I know it's heresy against the Emperor. Heresy against the Dark Gods. Heresy against everything, but um, it's just, I thought I'd add it. So, this is our main ship here, the Phoenix ship. Let's have a look and see what it's got. Uh, front, again, front. <laughs> Weapon uh, angle side front doesn't exist, okay. And then launch base. So it's pretty much the same as the other ones. It's got a quadruple sails, exactly the same. Planned strike, average troop capacity, uh, avoid species, the ship's image of plasma storms, blah, blah, blah. Discipline plus 25 for bravery. Hollow field, and uh, yeah. So not a huge lot different than the other guys. Um, let's see how they play differently. Uh, in the other one, we were using a lot of, we're launching a lot of boats, and that sort of worked for us. So, I mean, we can do that again if we want. This time we'll use two of these. Hang on, what do we get? A, a moon red dragon ship, a ghost dragon ship. We're at 937, so we've got 260 odd points left. Uh, These guys, these guys just exploded on us really, really quickly, didn't they? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to ignore them altogether. And we can't afford that. Uh, we can't afford that. Okay, so we can't afford those two, I think. What have we got? 263 points and no can't afford that we can get this guy so we'll get him that leaves us with what 50 points um actually get rid of this guy and we'll take this guy here that leaves us with uh, 66 points which we can't do anything <laughs> with how expensive these guys are. All right, that's cool. Is any of these guys, anything else here you got? That's 97, that's 93. I think we get rid of this one, get this one. Leaves us with 60 points, it's not, no better, okay. Cool, all right, uh, that's it. We're gonna call it, um, uh, 
just uh gliders. All right. Cool. And we'll launch up. Uh, we'll do random as always, and we'll launch and see how we go. Um, look at them. I mean, they're cool looking sort of, but they don't even look like warships, do they? They, they look like civilian vessels. But do you see, like, if you know the episode I'm talking about, I can't remember what the hell it's called. Him and his son go on, like, this this trip on this ship that he's built, um, Cisco, in Deep Space Nine, and it looks, like, almost identical to this. Except that this is orange. But, I mean, they look cool. The detail's really cool. I like the way they've done it. I mean, the guys who created the game didn't create these. These would have been in the board game. Um, and they copied from the board game, because that's what it's about. And they look really, really cool, but we'll just see how effective they are, yeah? Um, okay, so most of our weapons are front mounted, so we're going to be want front attack. Most of them, let's have a quick look at, we can open this up here. Now these guys, as you can see there. Yep. If I click on this guy. Go straight ahead. Click on this guy. Straight ahead. Front. Yep. Okay, everything's front mounted. Absolutely everything. This guy has extended range and runic targeting. There's runic targeting. Runic targeting, runic targeting. Yeah, so runic targeting, which is this one here, is going to be our go to as much as we can. So, uh, hang on, what was the. What was the range? The range is 9,000. Assuming most of 9,000. Yep, so it's all 9,000. So we're going to set that to 9,000. And so everyone is set to 9,000. And. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Put them into group one. And ooh, our closest line is actually here. This. He's gonna. I think he's gonna take that. Yeah. This part. We don't necessarily want to be fighting. You sort of want to pick them off. That's how you. I feel you've got to. You got to kind of pick them off. Are you kidding me? Has he done everything in one area? That would be funny. If it is, we're gonna slide around here. Uh, has he sent anything out yet? Yeah, he has. We're gonna, dark stars in flight. gonna get some dark stars going there. Then Break we're gonna get bombers going there. Cool. All right. So in this one, we got stasis bomb and we got disruption bomb. Um, runic targeting mode is gonna be our go-to win for this one. For the craft world. I mean, they're very pretty ships, aren't they? <laughs> very pretty. They're not like the uh, the Emperor of Man. Praise be his name, the Emperor. Um, for the Emperor. But they are cool looking ships in their own way. Area. I still prefer the um, the uh, Drukari. I think they look amazing. So, we've got some coming. Their defense turrets are actually pretty good. They've wasted that. Uh, we're gonna... Wait a minute. Cool. Alright, so we're gonna use bombers for the rest. The enemy has seized a strategic mm. area. Okay, someone hit his own. Yeah, still some bugs. Here. The enemy has seized a strategic area. All right, so he has split up a little bit, and he's got two. Aha! Perfect. So he split his guys up a little bit, and we are going to love this. So, um, what we want to do here is get a stasis on. We're going to force him to use his jump, or he's going to get targeted. I so he's either going to get targeted, which is cool, we zip around behind him, which 
Looks like he's not going to use his... Are you going to use your jump? The enemy ah, has cool. seized a strategic area. We understand. Okay, so from here... So we managed, look at the damage, man. We managed to take out one. The damage is insane. Uh, so bomber squadrons. Have we got a ping at all somewhere? All right, we got something going on down here. So, you know what, we'll send dark stars in flight. the dark stars down there. We're gonna go up here and take this. The enemy has seized a strategic area. And then from here, we're going to zoop around here and take this one. We understand. Wait for them. So as soon as we reveal where they are, this guy's actually oh, taking massive, massive world. damage. He hasn't got any, any of that stuff. His troops aren't looking great, though. Moving really, really slowly now. Our foe is here. For the craft world. Bombers are in motion. The okay. enemy has accumulated twenty five per cent of strategic points. You have seized a strategic area. A little bit low. Rally the guys. Allow me, I serve. Dude, we're going to keep cruising at speed for now. We're low. Because these guys don't have shields, this one makes them a little bit weak, so they're susceptible to boarding actions. Um, as you can see, they're very susceptible. Strategic points. Okay. 
So both times we ended up with um, a faction with zero shields, right? And so our we were extremely effective because we could move and the they didn't have the shields to stop our teleports in. Points. Again, I don't want you to think these guys are strong. With that very one specific enemy, yes. But um, most other factions, you're going to have a tougher time. If you go back and you actually watch my Orcs and um, Drukhari um, uh, episode, which was the last one, you'll actually see that I actually lose the Drukhari one. Um, because I come up against, I can't remember who I was fighting. I come up against someone, but I get plastered really easily. I can't remember who, which faction I was fighting. I think it was the Mechanicus. They blew me out of the water really quickly. I had to run and hide and couldn't just couldn't put enough damage into them. Um, these guys got the damage in uh, because they didn't have to get through the shields that the others have. So, I mean, look, it's 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 probably not the greatest showcase because uh, almost everything else on here has shields. Um, that you have to then you have to pound through before and then good armor as well. But anyway, um, they're probably really effective against each other and these guys. But yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, that's what it is, guys. Uh, if you have any questions for me or if you have again, if you uh, if there's things that you felt that I did wrong or that there's different tactic tactics that you use or there's skills later on that come in that, that really play to them a little bit better, then please let me know down in the comments below and let everybody else knows who watched the t the um who's watching the clip um that'd be great if you've really liked what you've seen then uh if you could really do me a solid and take five seconds not even a second and put your clicker on the uh, thumbs up if you liked what you've seen if you haven't liked then hit the thumbs down that's cool better yet leave a comment let me know what you liked or what you didn't like um if you're enjoying the content and you like anything to do with playing video games around uh the warhammer universe or strategy or fantasy for that matter um, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're watching on uh, BitChute, it'll be up the top above the right hand corner. If you're watching on YouTube, it's down the bottom below the right hand corner. Um, bottom right hand corner, I should say. Uh, if you really enjoy the Warhammer stuff and you also like painting and the art and the history and the lore, then um, you can follow me on Instagram where I uh, follow and like all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's pretty much most of what I do on Instagram. I also let people know when I'm going live to Twitch. Um, if you like watching this sort of thing live and you want to be a part of the show and bits and pieces, then by all means jump on and watch me when I'm um, streaming live on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash dogshowgaming. Um, every platform is dogshowgaming except Twitter, which is dog show game I N instead of a G, it's a one. Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, uh, also YouTube, you, um, BitChute, you, uh, Facebook, and Minds as well as Twitch. So um, you can join me on any of those. If you're feeling really charitable, you can help me out for Patreon uh, to keep the channel going. But that's all good. Um, that's about it, guys. Uh, Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for giving you th me your time. I hope that you've had some fun watching and you've learned something today. Uh, outside of that, remember, uh, the Emperor protects. See you guys. Bye.